Well, my name is Diego Narvaez. Uh, I come from Mexico City and I've been living in Victoria, BC, Canada for over a year now. And I'm presenting this solo exhibition called Behind Us at Fortune Gallery, which will be open until the end of, of October. And uh, well, I started in the arts. It's, it's hard to tell when, when, when it starts, no? Because it's always something that it's constructing and it takes some time. So I, I would say, yeah, as a kid, I was always uh, drawing and doodling and my notebooks are like completely covered and drawings and fantastic figures and all sorts of creatures. And uh, it was all from my imagination. I, I never drew from reality or, or copy like nature. And actually my sister was the one who was the artist of the family and she would uh, go to uh, different classes like dance classes or painting, sculpture, theater. And uh, I was more like the sports guy, so to say, in the, in the, in the family. And uh, so, but yeah, there was always like this, I don't know, like this calling just to, to be drawing and drawing and creating fantastic worlds. And uh, when I finished high school, I didn't have a clue what to study, what to, yeah, what to look for. And so I, I just grabbed all my money, all my savings and uh, traveled to Europe with some friends. And then they came back to Mexico and I stayed there and uh, I was in London. And so I got a job working in a kitchen in an Italian deli and then all of a sudden I realized that my, my free time was spent in visiting galleries or museums, taking, I don't know, drawing or picture, well, photography or sculpture, or etching courses. And uh, so, yeah, all my free time was just immersed in art. And then when I had to make a, a, a decision and want to study, it was so obvious that I wanted to study art. And so I just sent an email to my parents. Hey, you, you know what? I'm not gonna go for, I was enrolled for marketing or administration or something like that in, in Mexico. And they uh, <laughs> just said, well, guess what? I, I'm not gonna study arts. I'm just, sorry, I'm not gonna study business. I'm gonna go for arts. And then <laughs> I didn't hear from them, heard from them in a, in a while and then <laughs> they called me of course and they were all worried like what arts what are you talking about how are you gonna make a living out of that and all mm -hmm. of that sort of thing and then but yeah when I came back to Mexico they realized that it, I really was interested in arts and I was as soon as I went back to Mexico I was looking for courses and classes before the university started because I arrived like six months before university and I had to study a lot for the exam and I was super lucky to be chosen because yeah to get into the national university sometimes it, it's I don't know it's one out of 60 or 100 I, mm. I don't know how many but there are like 20, 20 places if you have to do the exam right so mm -hmm. it was like whoa like super tough and I got it and it was amazing and then went into the university and to be honest I was looking for etching or maybe sculpture I was I was not looking and I was thinking about painting at a time and and then I don't know I started doing some exercise in the in the classes in the like visual appreciation or something like that or visual education and yeah I started to get interested in painting and it was just like a like a whole world opened and it was amazing just to be able to mix colors and uh, to start playing with a brush and different materials and knives and just starting to see that oh okay yeah like something's happening there some images start to appear and and the colors are, are like really starting to dialogue between each other and so all of a sudden I was like, okay, it's painting, it's not etching. And I was afraid of color in the beginning, but then it was like so 
natural just to be playing. It was like a, like, yeah, like playing. You know? So in, in art school, I started working on some exercises. Of course, when, when you're starting, you don't have much clue of what to paint. And, and so you start drawing, like figure drawing and classes, drawing classes with models, for example. And then, yeah, the teachers start suggesting some exercises. But then my, my painting teacher also uh, encouraged us since the beginning to, to have a project of our own and to start thinking of series and, and, and thinking of a group of work. And I, it was, I didn't think about it, but I was just so attracted to landscape from the beginning. And uh, I, was, I remember I was working on some exercises, like really small, like eight by 10 maybe, uh, paintings of marines and seascapes and ships and all that. And I was actually painting some, some ships that were like a close up, but then you, you would look into the bigger paint and then, or painting, sorry, and then you would realize it was just like a, like a toy and it was a park and some kids were with a remote, you know, like, a, like, a, yeah, just guiding the ship around the, around the park. Right? And so I was making fun of the, of the seriousness or, or this like epic scenes of, uh, of the Marines and all that, you know. But the thing is that I, I was making fun of these, of these scenes, but they really caught me and uh, I was amazed by painting, yeah, water and sky and clouds. And uh, so I was looking for all sorts of images of, of yeah, including like seascapes. And then I, s I came across some icebergs and whoa, they were just like magnificent, like so sublime and so mysterious. And they were like, I don't know, like they just struck me, you know, and I had to paint them uh, because it was something like some connection just opened right away. and I couldn't even uh, understand what was happening in me, but I was just, yeah, so attracted to those huge masses of ice, you know. And so I started painting some icebergs and uh, I did, I don't know how many paintings, and it, they were, of course, they were still exercises, no, not, not like proper paintings. And then I started thinking of how to bring this these icebergs and this ice and snow uh, to our common days because of course as an artist in Mexico and in Mexico City is like oh, what is this guy doing with the ice and snow <laughs> right if there's none of that in, in Mexico City so I started thinking of how to link that to our uh, daily lives in Mexico City and uh, so then I started to bring some don't know why I started with an avalanche that was just coming through buildings in downtown Mexico City and then some s huge snowballs appearing in, in don't know in another different part of, uh, of the city and that's where landscaping transformation uh, a series that it's only about Mexico City like non places in Mexico City that's how it, it started and uh, and that has to do with a I think with a tradition of landscape in Mexico because even though in some countries landscape hasn't been like so much, such a theme or such a, a topic or a subject for painters in Mexico there's a huge tradition no from Jose Maria Velasco no or or even before that with with en engravers no and people doing mm -hmm. yeah etching and all sorts of uh, drawings from colonial times, you know, and uh, and then came don't know Doctor Atl, which was this mm -hmm. super interesting character because he was not only interested in depicting landscape but in the more like the emotional parts of of, of, of landscape and how how landscape uh, has to do with yeah with our inner. Uh, vibrations, so mm -hmm. to say, and, and so he humanized landscapes, so to say, and it's nothing that he's done only himself, but many, many, many artists. I mean, the rom romanticism was full of that that power between nature.
nature and, and the human spheres, no? And, uh, and yeah, after looking at some Mexican painters, I also started studying different uh, um, traditions or different uh, generations of, of landscape painters. And that happened, of course, in the university as well. And so I met painters, I don't know, like Constable or William Turner or more contemporary painters like uh, Gerhard Richter or don't know even photographers like Canada. There's a, there's a powerful example, which was uh, the project called Anthropocene with uh, Edward Brzezinski and a couple of other photographers and videographers. And they did this majestic film where you can see the ways uh, the, the humans have shaped the world in, in many different ways, no? And how landscape, the landscape worldwide is just shaped to our image and to our necessities. And, and it's, it's an impressive film because can be so beautiful and so tragic at the same time so it's just sublime but it's also like whoa what, what are we doing with with the world right and I think my paintings are a bit like that as well like you, you can see this I wouldn't call them scenes but you can see these landscapes where there's no humans and then there's something happening always and sometimes it's evident and sometimes it's like uh, just like like a bit subtle action happening there between most of the times between nature and, and the urban settings. There. So I'm constantly looking for artists and artworks that deal with, with landscape as, as a way of reflecting uh, how we as humans uh, relate to, our, to the environment and to the surroundings. And so I'm constantly looking at, yeah, photography and films or even some newspaper uh, cuts or, or news or magazines or, or even, yeah, news that talk about the development happening here in Victoria, for example. That, that also has to do with, yeah, with the way we choose to, to relate with the environment and to construct what we call reality and, and the spaces that surround us. No? Mm -hmm. uh, I started exhibiting when I was still ar uh, at art, art school and uh, actually it was like one of the last projects we did at the painting workshop uh, where we all exhibited, I don't know, between two and four paintings that were like five by five feet. And so the whole exhibition was the same format, five by five square paintings from eight of us. So it was around 30 paintings, square paintings. And it was a success. It was amazing to see like yeah, how, how would, would we uh, solve the composition in those squares with different thematics? Because some of us were painting landscapes, but some others were painting, I don't know, human figures or scenes or abstracts. Mm -hmm. So it was a, a super fun exhibition. And I don't know, that, that's where I started to, to bring, yeah, like the ice and snow into other other places where they don't belong so to say so in that series which is called back to paint i was uh, painting actually uh, artworks from other artists like landscape artists and for example there's there's a bay cover on on a super huge uh, sheet from Cristo and jean claude and and i covered it again on on with snow no, and I changed the whole uh, atmosphere and uh, the lights and the temperatures. So it was all super gloomy and it was, I don't know, snowing or frozen. So that exhibition was called uh, The Time of Painting and it was just like a metaphor. Uh, don't know, like it was the time to go back to, to painting and it was
was uh, sort of like an answer to the contemporary art. I mean, we were just students, right? But uh, it was just like a call to the people like, hey, <laughs> painting's still alive and we're here and we're doing it with passion and we, we really want to, yeah, to do our careers uh, painting, you know? And it was just a great exercise and I learned a lot from that exhibition and that helped me move to then uh, other projects. For example, after, soon after that, I started the, the series called Landscape in Transformation and I did it with, a, with the help of a grant and then that allowed me to present the project to a museum, the Anahuacali Museum which was uh, built by Diego Rivera and it's a fantastic museum because it's like a contemporary pyramid where all his uh, pre-colonial figures and sculptures are located and it's just a marvelous place. It's just so strange and so unique and so my paintings looked amazing there and I had the opportunity to show more than 60 paintings and drawings and sketches and previous paintings and it was just a huge project at least for me at that time no and uh, and I have always thought that like one door opens the next and so thanks to that exhibition and to that project I was able to uh, submit a project to get a grant to go to Antarctica and keep on my investigation with ice and snow and really experience what to be there painting under low temperatures and those specific uh, conditions uh, meant you no know? and and soon after that project well not soon but after that project i came back to mexico and i started working in like a group of series which took me for like almost eight years and and that involved also a trip to Iceland to participate in two different art residencies. And so I like collected a group of work with just uh, from the poles, so to say, like yeah, Antarctica in summer and then Iceland in winter time. And so I had like the both uh, poles, so to say, or worlds and uh, and that was comprised in another uh, exhibition called uh, Ineffable Visions, and which was presented in, a, in the contemporary Mexico center. Uh, and it was, again, a big project with more than 70 pieces. And I don't know, that, that, that really summarized the work that I had done for so many years, no? And so, in those series, I just developed a way of working with, with landscape and, and the way I've been trying to present my work and just to get, yeah, to spread it in different projects and to share it with, with different publics, you know. And that brought me, yeah, to, to Canada as well, no, just looking for different landscapes and different ways to relate to the, to the environment and to and to work with what's happening at the, at the same time and the same space, you no? Know? So now I'm really interested in, in see what's gonna happen now during fall and winter where the, when the rains start and I'll be out there painting and just experimenting with rain, which I didn't have the, the chance to do it last year. I was just in my studio and yeah, and trying to to get used to living here in Canada, but now it's the time just to be out and experiment with, yeah, with the rain, no, and, and the low temperatures as well, but maybe not so as, can, as Iceland or Antarctica where the lows were really dropping and freezing, no? So let's see, let's see what, what comes next.